read in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 through 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 through 19. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to, best to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go and to possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. Well, good morning. Do you have many that are visiting with us? We are very thankful that you are here. I ask you to take out your Bibles and follow along with what we'll be talking about this morning. Last week began a uh, series, I guess, last Sunday evening, about dealing with doubts. And this morning we're going to talk about the power of free will and, and understanding how truly powerful and how much of a gift free will is. Last week... We began to talk about these types of things from the standpoint of this doubt that people have. And the first thing, or at least the points that I had made last week, were these. First of all, having doubts is okay. It's okay. There's people that have questions. It's okay. Acting as though we don't have them and never asking the question, that's not okay. If you have questions, ask them. And if you're willing to doubt, which is fine, I encourage you to be willing to seek the answers. Ask. Study. And if you seek those answers and those answers are given to you, and perhaps you just come to the conclusion, well, that's not what I like in an answer, then you truly weren't seeking the truth. A lot of times we're just trying to validate what I already thought. So I encourage you not only if you're going to seek the answers, to be willing to accept those answers, even if it shows that you are doing something or I'm doing something that is not right. The desire is to be right with God. And so this is just, again, the foundation going forward with some of the questions that you all have asked about. As we strive to understand really how to deal with doubt, first of all, and understanding how our place in this world and the importance that we all play in it. I have to tell you, I had somebody come up to say that they thought it was a werewolf in front of the moon. It's not a werewolf. It's just a woman. So I wanted to clarify that before we continue so people aren't staring at it the whole time. What is free will? Free will is to look at a picture and think it's a werewolf, I suppose. Free will is something that we all have. Free will is the power to decide what you will do in a certain situation. We understand that. It's choice. You have the power of choice. We all have it. What an amazing gift that is. I don't have the power to choose the circumstances that I may find myself in. But I have the choice and the free will of how I'm going to react to those things. How I'm going to respond to those things that I go through in this life. We all do. And there's pieces of, the, of this that is so important as we go forward. I don't know that everybody understands the power that you do have. If we come away with the conclusion of saying, I can't help it, I strongly encourage you to reconsider that view. When we come to the conclusion of circumstances that we find ourselves in, and I can't get past them, I strongly encourage you to reconsider your view. First of all, to understand how powerful our God is, but also to understand what blessing He has given us 
and what free will is. Now, free will brings in some issues, if you would like to look at it that way. You do have a choice to make. But you see, the amazing thing is I have a choice to respond to something, and you have a choice to respond to something. And if I choose something, it may influence you to do something. And then when you have billions of people that have this same thing of free will, there's going to be some issues that come up. There's going to be some differences that occur. There are going to be some consequences to this free will. And we don't even have to look at it from a billion people. We can look at it just in your family. There's consequences that occur based on decisions that are going to be made. But we all have this choice. God has given us this choice. And what comes with choice is consequences. One of the greatest things that God has given us is free will. What free will does, it allows you to love him back if you want to. It's your choice. That is amazing to me. I get to choose whether or not my God is worthy of my reverence. If he's worthy of my love. It's weird to say that. But that's exactly the choice that I have. So when you think about choice and the power of choice, what comes with choice is good and evil. Now, here's the thing. There were some of the questions that talked about what if God took away evil? Let's think about that for just a minute. There'd be a lot less people in this building if he took away evil. When you think about evil itself, whose definition are we going by? God's or mine? Proverbs, the sixth chapter, as an example, says that lying is an abomination because a lot of times you hear talk, people talk about an abomination and there are certain sins we'll talk about with an abomination. Okay, that's true. So is lying. Lying's an abomination. God should get rid of the people that are liars. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't be here. Just so you know. Well, what if he gets away from the, the choice of even lying? Maybe it's not even a choice. Well, then it's not free will. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to serve him. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to listen to what he has to say or I'm not. I get to choose. People woke up this morning thinking, I get to go worship God or I don't. That's my choice that I have. If you take away the choices that we deem to be evil, you're nothing but a robot that comes into the building, worships him because that's what you're supposed to do. We leave and we all drive the speed limit home. Because there's no evil. <laughs> We've got to understand when we talk about evil and we talk about what is good, that we need to understand that if we're going to follow God, he determines what that is. Now, this has a lot more to do with other sermons we'll have in the future. But it's a foundational point of this. We are blessed to have free will. But what free will brings are choices for people to choose not to follow God. And if people choose not to follow God, there's all sorts of things and consequences that come with those decisions. Now... 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, in verse uh, 23, and just use this as an example as we begin. Here, talking about not being like Israel, understanding what liberty is. He's going to get into this a little bit more as you go forward in this chapter. But just verse 23 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. So not only do I have a choice to make of whether or not I'm going to use my freedom to do what I want to do, I also have to make sure what I'm going to choose to do is going to be of encouragement to other people. You talk about another layer of good and evil. What's the purpose as to why I'm doing something? The motivation behind why I'm doing something. So free will, as we get into this subject, is a deep subject that we're obviously just touching on this morning. But we need to understand, with the blessing of free will... There absolutely will be consequences. When you think about biblical examples of this, I like this picture, by the way. 
So you think about this picture. It's not a werewolf. It's <laughs> arrows that are pointing every direction with, for this one guy, this one choice that he's making. If we all have the same exact things, where we all make choices, and those choices go all, all over the place, do you know how many arrows are in just in this room? And choices? And decisions that people make? Let alone everybody throughout the world. And it just takes one person that has power to make a horrible decision. And there's consequences for years to come. It's always been that way. It continues to be that way. And that's on a grand scale. As a parent, there's consequences to my actions. That can be seen, obviously, in my marriage relationship. And it can be seen for my children. They have a choice to make, though. Are they going to follow? Or are they going to do what God wants them to do? Luke, the 23rd chapter. You know, over in Matthew, the 27th chapter, we're told that both thieves were insulting Jesus. Both of them were. What changed? Because in Luke's account, at least the one of the criminals that was there continues to yell, hurling abuse at him, it says in verse 39. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God, since you were under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. First of all, that's awesome when you're talking about Jesus and how he handles this. But I think it's important to understand verse 41 and 42. He tells them very clearly, we're suffering for what we've actually done, the choices, the deeds that we chose to do. This man has done nothing and he's still suffering consequences for things that are going on. We have a choice to make. We are the thieves on the cross. We deserve death for the things that we have done. But we have a choice. Am I going to continue to live in this life and never turn to the Savior and make sure that I have a re relationship with Him, understanding He's the one that took my place, or am I just going to live this life and die in my sins? It's the consequences. You know, it's amazing to me. Jesus doesn't save this man from death, physical death here. He's still going to suffer. There's still consequences to his actions, but he's going to be with God for eternity. Eternity. Because of Jesus Christ. And it's the same opportunity that you and I have. So a lot of times when we talk about the thief of the cross, deservedly so, we go to the good one. The one that changed. But way too often we're the other one that are not choosing to follow him. But it's the choice we all have. Both of these men were right next to Jesus and they chose opposite. And it's the exact same thing that you and I can choose. I'm not going to read 2 Samuel 11 through 24. You're welcome. But in 2 Samuel 11 through 24, what you find is the consequences... Of David's actions. David sinned with Bathsheba. When David sinned with Bathsheba, there are consequences that occur after that that will follow him until the day he dies and beyond. There's consequences. First of all, the baby dies. There's consequences. Others die in that same story. Uriah dies. But if you continue on here in these chapters, all of a sudden you see Amnon, his other son, dies. Then Absalom tries to take over and he dies. And then David sins again. And David's not going to be able to build the temple because of the fighting that continues on. But because of his actions and the choices that he made, even though God forgave him, he forgives him. There are consequences to the actions that occur. People die, and his family is deeply divided because of his actions. Forgiven by God, but the consequences continue. 
Those are the choices that we can get caught up in. Deuteronomy, the verses that were just read to us in chapter 30. Chapter 28 does the same thing. This is what God does all over the scriptures. He basically tells you, look, you can choose life. Or you don't have to choose life. That's your choice if you would like to make that. Jesus, or excuse me, God in, in verse 15 says, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. Now, we understand that. I have set before you today life and prosperity. How many of us choose the opposite? And how absurd it is to say, mm, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to choose death and adversity. That's what I'd prefer. But spiritually, we can do this all the time. He tells him, he continues on here, talking about he needs to make sure that you're walking in his love. You're commanded to follow Jesus or follow God and, and keep his commandments. In verse 15, just that little word, if. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but you're drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, you will be destroyed. That little if. God loves us so much to give us that little if. I'm offering you eternal life. You can have it. You're part of my family. But if you choose not to obey me, I will allow you to do that also. Some of the questions come in talking about why would God ever send people to hell? I want to make this emphatically clear to you. We choose where we're going to spend eternity. God gives us the choice. Of where we're going to spend eternity. If you choose not to have a relationship with him. What he says to you is. Okay. Okay. He is not going to be around sin. He is going to be with his people for eternity. Those that chose to be with him. Those who choose not to be with him. Are going to get that same opportunity to make that choice. We can't turn around and blame God when we choose poorly. It's your choice. It's my choice. Understanding that choice is so important. And understanding the influence that we have with this choice is so important. I read a story, and you can imagine this is an illustration of many different ways. There was an alcoholic who had two daughters. The one daughter grew up and she became an alcoholic. And she looked and said to the interviewer, what choice did I have? The other daughter grew up and would not even touch alcohol. And you know what she said? What choice did I have? What choice did I have? Same parents, same dad, same situation. But chose opposite and they will say what choice did I have you had the choice to follow it or you had the choice not to That's the choice it doesn't mean there's not consequences or circumstances that are difficult in your life We see this generation to generation <coughs> Generation to generation people will choose to do the exact same thing As their parents it's amazing to me Instead of trying to better ourselves in certain situations but this is what we see with the kings in the Old Testament. And what's amazing to me is some of the horrible kings had sons that grew up to do what? Serve God. What choice did they have? They could have been just like their parents. Or they chose to serve God. It's the same choice that we have. And so often I'm afraid that we do not take advantage of the amazing blessing that God has given us. This power. Understand the power that you have. You will not many times choose the circumstances that you find yourself in. Matter of fact, you may be in circumstances because of other people's choices. But you do get to choose. You get to choose how you act. You get to choose how you react to something. And you certainly get to choose how you respond to something. 
It is so important for us to understand the power that we have of choice. We get so caught up in our circumstances and missing the opportunities that God has given us through those chances, those opportunities that we have through those situations. I want to tell you, there's questions that, and we'll talk about this as we go forward, that we'll talk about why would God ever allow me to go through this situation? And they focus so much on the fact that God allowed me to go through this circumstance. And we miss the point that God was with us the whole time to get us through those circumstances. That's the dangerous part when it comes to free will. Or not seeing God in our lives. He is with us the whole time. The danger is we don't see him. And you know what the amazing thing about our God is with that? He allows you to make that choice. It's your choice whether or not you're going to follow him or whether or not you're going to see him. Over in 1 John, the first chapter, 1 John, the first chapter, this whole chapter, at least in the beginning here, is talking about the ifs. The end of the book talks about no, K-N-O. So you'll know, you can have confidence. But here in the beginning, it's if. So we have choice to make, right? God is going to be light. In verse 5, he says, This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Now you stop right there. Right off the bat, he tells you what the deal is. God is light. There's no darkness. Now you have choice. God is light. There is no darkness. Verse 6, If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So what does he say? You can say all day long that you have fellowship with God, that you are in the light. But if you are caught up in darkness, if you are caught up practicing sin, guess what? You're just a liar. You're not with him because of the choices that you've made. Matthew, the seventh chapter, Jesus will say, people are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out demons? And he's going to tell them, depart from me, I know ye not. You who practice lawlessness. We can sit in church buildings. We can sing songs. We can do a lot of things that look the part of a child of God. But that doesn't mean that we are. We've got to understand the relationship that we have. But it's your choice. I'm light. There's no darkness, he says in verse 5. Verse 6 says, here's your choice. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus. His son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The choice is yours. It's choice is mine. Being a child of God is not a difficult thing to figure out. The danger, so often though, is that we are really good at deceiving ourselves. He says, look, I'm light. There is no darkness. It doesn't matter how much you want to call yourself a Christian. If you're going to walk in the darkness... You're not a child of God. That's simple. That doesn't mean it's not hard. There's not hard parts to those things. And choices that are going to have to be made. And that there's not consequences. Sure there are. But even when we stumble. Even when we choose not to follow him. He says, I got that too. If you're a child of God and you stumble. You get caught up in sin. In verse 9, he says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He has covered every issue that we may have in not having a relationship with him outside of taking away our free will. It's your choice. It is my choice. You may not like the choices that you have. Still your choice. 
When it comes to being a child of God, it's your choice. He goes on in chapter 2 here in 1 John and talks about the advocate. The one who is willing to forgive us. But God makes it very, very clear. If you want to be my child, if you want to be with me for eternity, you're going to be in a place that is only light. You have to choose whether or not that's okay for you. And a lot of people choose that this temporary life is worth far more than an eternal life and the choices that we make. That's your choice. If God would have asked me, and he doesn't, but if he did, there's a lot of people here in this world that I would take away their free will. Take it away. There's people in power that do horrible things to other people. Take it away. But who gets to pick and choose who doesn't get to have free will and who does? Me? Oh, man, what a dangerous thing that would be. Our God, who sent his son to die for every single person, including those that are choosing horrible things, sent his son to die for them, to give them the opportunity to give them the choice. He's the judge. He's the one that wants to have a relationship with them and with us. There are horrible things, horrible choices that people make in this world. That's even more reason as to why we need to shine bright so that people can see him and understand that the free will that we have, we can choose to let people see Jesus Christ. That is the choice that we have. This is just the beginning of these conversations about this particular subject and some of the questions that have come in. But I encourage you to think about this subject. The power that you have. Because of our God has given it to you. There's consequences though. You know the amazing thing about David and the story of David and why I used the story of David is that yes, he was forgiven, but there's still consequences. We've obeyed the gospel. And those of us that have obeyed the gospel, you can be forgiven of your sins, but there's consequences still of sin. It doesn't mean that there are eternal consequences, but it does mean there's impact on other people. We need to understand the influence that we have on people, good and bad. And if we've done things in our lives and there are those consequences, sometimes we just have to be willing to accept it. Be willing to ask for forgiveness of others. Shine bright as we've been called to be. God's children. That we have the opportunity to be with him because he loves us so much. Because he chose to send his son to die for us. And that we are choosing to be his children. If you have not done so, now's the time. Now's the time. Every time we get up in the building, every breath that we get every single day, we are choosing whether or not we are going to follow God or not. It's not just the invitation time of an end of a sermon. We all are choosing whether or not we are right with Him. In this moment, in every moment we are blessed to have. Make the most of that time. Make the most of the time you have now. If you need to obey the gospel, do not wait. Do not wait. Follow him. Make sure that you pray for one another. Remember one another. Encourage one another. But if there's anything that we can do for you, you have questions, ask. But if there's anything we can do for you right now, I ask you to please come as we stand and sing.